So good morning, afternoon and evening everyone and welcome to today's webinar, Trident Analyst 4.7 Highlights. Uh, my name is Gregor Wilhauk, I'm Software Product Line Manager for Trimble and I'm managing the Trimble Dew Spatial um, Software Product Line. With me today we have Heide Heckmann who is Software Product Manager for the Trident Analyst Product Line and Robert Huber who is Portfolio Manager for Land Solutions. So today's roadmap will be a uh, first quick overview of the Trimble Geospatial um, business unit. Um, then I will give you some overview of Trident Analyst, how it works in a GIS and a spatial imaging over um, environment. And then I will hand over to Heide who will walk you through all the new features in Trident Analyst 4.7. And finally, we will have a, a around 10 minutes Q&A session in which you can ask questions regarding the new release. And with that, I will start with an overview of the Trimble Geospatial um, product offering, uh, of which Trident Analyst and the Land Mobile System is part of that. So Trimble Geospatial really offers you the entire, um, let's say, geospatial data solution starting from satellite uh, over aerial and land solutions. On the satellite side, since Trimble does not offer any satellites for sale, we are focusing solely on software solutions, which is namely the info and ecognition environments. The info suite allows you to process and um, rectify and pre-process satellite data, while ecognition allows you to analyze uh, and extract information from satellite data. On the aerial side, we offer uh, a full suite of aerial cameras, laser scanning and imaging equipment, um, as well as direct georeferencing and flight management software. And this ties nicely into the info software, which uh, is focused really on data processing um, of the full photogrammetry and laser scanning solution. And that hands over to eCognition, which is uh, the environment for really extracting information from that kind of data. On the land side, we have an integrating hardware software system um, focused on mobile data capturing um, for imaging, GIS, and spatial imaging. And with that comes a software environment, uh, namely the Trident Analyst environment for spatial imaging, GIS, loads, and extraction, really, which is focusing on processing and extracting information from that data. So a bit more about Trident Analyst, which you're seeing today in, in a more focused way. Trident Analyst comes in three different flavors. There's Trident Analyst for GIS, Trident Analyst for roadway science, and then Trident Analyst for spatial imaging. And it really is a complementary system uh, tying in to the MX hardware suite. Um, and on the Trident GIS side, the software is really focused on a GIS and asset management workflow while um, on the spatial imaging side, the workflow is on, on a let's say, more detailed level um, focused on a survey and CAD type accuracy, while Trident Analyst for Roadway Science is really a focused solution for automatically extracting roadway signs um, from MX8 or uh, data. To give you a, an overview of what kind of data um, the, uh, the land mobile solution produces. Uh, we picked this screenshot showing a, a really highly accurate and, and very detailed point cloud, which is really um, providing sufficient detail for both um, GIS as well as CAD type applications. But the Trident and um, MX8 and MX1 and 3 solution isn't really only about high resolution data and point clouds, it's also about delivering and deliverables and solutions fast to the to the end customer. So the, the, this screenshot here shows you some examples of what kind of deliverables can be generated using um, the Trident Analyst software environment. So a bit more detail on the Trident Analyst software. As I said before, it's really an end-to-end -end solution tying in to the hardware components, offering um, corridor management, starting from viewing the raw sensor data, processing the data, which is really large point clouds, and in combination with that, GeoReference, of course, high resolution digital imaging. Um, it allows you to automatically, as well as manually, extract features. You can detect changes, and you can actually also do feature coding. 
And usual deliverables produced with Trident Analyst are in the GIS and mapping area, um, features such as 3D positions, points, polylines, polygons, but also attributes which are qualitative and quantitative, such as uh, detection of changes, um, update of information. You can generate digital terrain models, and of course you can also produce point clouds um, as well as digital images. On the survey and engineering side, the, let's say the level of accuracy is a, a bit higher and the kind of attributes or, or deliverables which are generated are a bit more detailed. So in this area you would um, generate survey coded three points, um, 3D break lines such as edges of pavement, pavement markings, center lines, but also road geometry, for example, cross sections, um, elevation, and all that in a land XML format. Uh, and again, digital terrain models and point clouds can be generated as a deliverable. To visualize how the Trident um, software as well as the MX hardware ties into the entire workflow, we picture two different workflows, starting with the GIS inventory and um, project update workflow. So in a typical workflow, you would start actually with your mobile data capture step, um, do trajectory and post-processing, um, so the mobile data part would be in the field, while the remaining steps in the workflow are um, in the office. So under mobile data capture, of course, you would use the Trident, and in this case an MXA3, which is a um, optical and um, low accuracy laser scanning system. So you would do trajectory using the PathTag software, and then starting from information extraction over QC, QA, QC steps, and direct connection to GS, um, you would cover this in your Trident Analyst environment. And of course, you can feed back information um, to run ongoing updates and, and maintenance loops. On the survey side, um, excuse me, one click too fast. On the survey side, the workflow is very similar, even though that in the field you would have additional steps such as setting up a control and target network to reach the high accuracy, then you would run through a mobile data capture step, do your trajectory and post-processing, then register a point cloud, um, run automated informational feature extraction, and then again run your QA, QC steps, manual feature extraction steps, and finally go into your CAD export. And so this should give you uh, a brief overview of how Trident Analyst fits into the geospatial workflow, what kind of um, functionalities Trident Analyst covers, and, and how it ties into the uh, Trimble land mobile hardware environment. And with that, I would hand over to Heide to give us an up update on the new features um, in Trident Analyst 4.7. Okay, thank you very much, Gregor, for, for the introduction. On my side, I would like to welcome you all as well uh, to this webinar covering the new add-ons to the Trident Analyst, uh, stepping up from the version, uh, stepping up from the version uh, 4.7, uh, 4.6 to the version 4.7. Um, the main aspects um, have been grouped into four major parts. So the first part I would like to speak about is the 64-bit edition we are offering now. The second uh, part is the 3D selection and classification uh, tools which now are available. In a third part, I'd like to talk about the positional accuracy and va uh, validation and um, quality control tool. And finally, I will show some new and approved object tools. At first, let's talk about the 64-bit edition. Um, besides the 32-bit edition, we are now offering, offering the 64-bit edition. Uh, this 64-bit edition will overcome uh, most of the shortcomings the 32-bit edition has. This would be, for example, um, we are now able to display and handle a lot more data, so it's now possible to produce billions of points and thousands of images. It's also possible to smoothly uh, pan and zoom uh, in this data. The next section will be the 3D selection and the classification. Here, at first, 
I would like to talk of the um, classes we can now add to the tool for the classification. At first, we have uh, to talk about the ISPRS classes. Um, so these are the uh, classes the American Society of Photogrammetry and Remote Sensing um, has uh, recommended for the last format. Then we um, have to talk about the analyst classification classes. These are classes uh, which have, have been predefined by um, by Trident, so it's not necessary for the customer to always set up all the classes needed. And finally, we added um, the possibility for the cl uh, customer um, to add classes of his own. So he is now able to describe and to uh, set up the class in the way he would like to um, handle it. The classes can be displayed. Uh, not only in the predefined um, colors, but also in the customer selected colors. And it's also possible uh, to export all the needed uh, classes by the customer. I'd like to show you how this has been set up in the small video. So here we see how the classification and the classes are set up. We do have the ISPRS classification going from the first class to number 12. Then the analyst class, which have been predefined uh, by Trident. And also the customer classes, which can be defined by the customer itself. Also, we see we can either use the predefined colors or the customer defined colors as it's wished. In the classification filter, we see the same grouping, but also the added new class, which can be turned on and off as desired. This can also be done with the other classes as well. And this new class also shows when the classification tool will be used. In case we don't need this class, it's also possible to remove the class. Okay. The next, next section, I would like to talk about the um, uh, selection tools we uh, integrated to the Trident. Um, at first, we have to talk about the 3D box. Then we uh, have to talk about the 3D polygons and the 2D polygons. The 3D box offers the possibility to um, set up the box as um, wished by the customer. And it can be rotated, it can be moved into the right position, and it, it can be um, shrunk or extended in all directions as necessary in order to select the complete object. Using the 3D polygon or the 2D polygon, it's al always necessary to um, predefine this polygon. Either it's possible to use already um, defined polygons or it's possible to uh, generate the polygon on the way. These um, tools allow a fairly efficient way to select uh, different kinds of features or objects. Here we see a quick example of how a car can be classified, or here in the movie, we see how the box will be set up. In order sh to show you the way a little bit uh, more direct, we have put some um, help or tick marks in the movie and makes it easier to follow what's going on. So at first, we set up the box, and then we rotate the box into the right position. We can move the box.
and expand the box into the necessary directions in order to cover all the uh, points we would like to cover or select. For the classification workflow, we now decide in which class this um, object has to be moved or classified. And to finalize the complete process, we use the selection, the classification tool, and unselect everything. Now we can check if everything has been done properly. With the help of turning on or off our class in which we have put the data. Okay. In the next movie, we will see how to use the polygons. In this case, it will be the predefined uh, 2D polygon. So at first, we have to generate the polygon. This polygon can be reused in case necessary for other purposes. Now we finalize the polygon with the right click of the mouse and we now can see what will be covered and selected using this polygon. Here we see the complete car is covered. In case we would have used the 3D polygon, we um, would have to select or to exaggerate the box by ourselves. This would help in case um, we would have power lines on top of the car. So not only the car would be selected, but also the power lines. So here it's necessary to distinguish what has to be done. As shown before, this is what happens. This is the result. And when we are satisfied, we can keep on doing the next selection and extraction. Now we have finished our classification. Um, a result could look like this one. We are also able to now color code our results with the single uh, classes. In order to come up with such a result, it's possible to use the um, break line uh, detection tool in combination with the road surface um, detection tool. So by using these two features, we come up with this road and surface uh, part. And using the already mentioned tool, we also can come up with this other um, classified data. Okay, now let's step up to the position accuracy and validation. Here we um, are now able to quickly identify areas of low quali uh, quality in position and orientation by using um, trace color for the GPS path. For example, in here, in this slide, you can see everything is fine and green uh, and blue, and um, some parts over here are green. Um, looking at the standard deviation, we can see, well, the standard deviation is um, not as high or as good as the rest of the line, so we know, well, something has to be done over here. Um, as mentioned before, you can uh, use the properties of the GPS path, use the gradient, and 
For example, here you can use the quality factor. You can see here that now everything is fine, besides one area in which the uh, satellite signal has not been detected because we were passing underneath a bridge. This can be seen now when we turn on the satellites. It's also possible to um, show the standard deviations of these areas and many other um, attributes of the flight to easily detect what's going on. Now the last part is the new and improved broad, um, object tools. Here we are now able to um, create polylines from points. So by generating um, breakpoints for the edge um, detection, we can uh, easily manipulate uh, the result for the line. So we are not stuck to a final result. Uh, we can clone polylines. We can shift these cloned polylines to either um, uh, location or height. Um, before we finalize our work, we are always able to preview what we have done. And now um, we enhanced our delete object tools by um, not only delete the complete object, but just uh, one vertex which uh, has been chosen by the um, user. It's also possible to highlight single points uh, with the tool before uh, choosing the, these points uh, by generating lines. To make it more clear what's going on, I have the following uh, little video to show you how this is done. So here we see the extracted lines. So these are points of the center line, and these are points of an, of an edge. I did choose just a few points to make clear what the tool will be used for. So we can decide which layer uh, of points we would like to use as a base for the um, polyline construction. And now we can check and we see there's um, one point missing, so not the complete line has been generated. And now by changing the parameter lateral range tolerance, we can see, well, now it fits in very nicely. It's also possible to delete points of the line. Here everything, I think, would appear more or less fine, but um, might be necessary to delete one or two points in between the line to make it look a little bit more smoother. And it's also possible to add points. Uh, since this is just an example, I added the points um, arbitrary, so, well, they are just um, freehand drawings. Basically, the point cloud should be underneath, but then it would be hard to see what's going on. So now we generated the points and we calculated the line. Now when we are satisfied, we can f uh, finalize this by creating the polyline. And now the work is uh, finished for, for this part. The next part will be creating and cloning polylines and um, polygon areas. To make it easier to understand what's going on, I decided to draw an inner line on a separate uh, layer with the tool Create Object. I can start drawing the line. or digitize the feature I like. 
I'm always um, in the position to step back and correct my points as shown now. And here we also can see the highlighting of the point before we use it. Okay, so the first object has been drawn. And now I would like to use parts of this object uh, to generate the outer line. So this is done now by generating another layer. Use the tool again, create object, press the shift button in order to activate the um, clone and shift options. And now we copy the object um, to one side of this uh, original uh, object. We would use the negative sign, we would copy it to the other side of the object. And this would be also possible to be done with a vertical shift in case necessary. Okay, here I would like to move it a little bit more to have a better result. And now I can create the new object. Uh, some parts of this object um, I don't like, I would like to get rid of because they do not fit in. In order to do so, I will turn off the inner line um, layer and use the delete vertex tool to, bec uh, to become a good result for the line. Next feature added to this create object tool is we can reuse parts of uh, the polyline without redrawing these. So we can just copy parts or use them and um, add further line segments to it. For this, to make it more clear, I generated another layer again. And now I click on the first vertice. And I click on the vertice where I would like to keep on uh, going and reuse this part. So the highlighted part will be reused. And I will just go on and generate a new object. Okay, this is the result. So this will be now in the new layer. And finally, it's possible to also generate and reuse uh, parts of the line to generate a polygon area. This area would also be possible to be used for the classification as mentioned before. So this is the area I would like to use and generate the polygon. In case I'm not satisfied, I'm also able to add additional points to the um, polygon. And by right-clicking, I'm finishing. Okay, now go back to the slides. What else has been added? So now, as mentioned before, uh, well, it has been possible before to uh, detect breaklands, but now it's possible to do this in a batch, batch processing. We can detect the breakline and also uh, export the breakpoints. Then we added a feature which makes it possible to um, export single images, either in JPEG or in bit format. We added new color modes for the laser point layers. 
we enhance the 3D map navigation and uh, tool shortcuts. So these will be found in the description. And we um, uh, color-coded the message log uh, in order to make it easier um, to make the interpretation of uh, the message log easier. This I can show you also in the next slide. So this just tells you where to find this break line uh, detection tool. This is found in the extension model manager. Here we can load our last files. In case I don't want to uh, use all last fi files, I'm also able to turn them on and off as desired over here. I can set the parameters and I can decide if I would like to calculate just the breakpoints or the break line. Okay. And this one shows you how the image can be exported. So in case we have to use an image separately in order to write down some information to science, for example, we just right-click, export the file to the desired um, format, and we can either keep the label as it's um, predefined, or we can reuse, uh, we can change the name. Okay. Finally, I would like to show you something about the color modes for the laser point layers. Here we have the possibility to uh, view the um, laser data in a single color mode. We can add the intensity, so sometimes it's easier to interpret um, the data. Here, for example, you can see the uh, pavement markings, or we can show um, and add uh, the classification color and the layers of the classification. For this one, I have also a quick little slide uh, clip. Okay, so we can use the properties again of our uh, laser data and change as liked uh, the color. So now we can see the solid uh, single color, or we can switch and add the intensity of the data. And finally, we are able to see what kind of classes have already been set up and um, how much has to be done in order to come up with a complete uh, classified project. And with that, I would like to thank uh, our presenters, Heidi and also Rob, um, and would like to thank all the audience for taking the time to look into our new version, Trident 4.7, and hope to be able to welcome you to one of our future webinars that we will announce um, soon. Thanks a lot, and goodbye.